The bids are in. The gavel is dropped. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Wine Bid, we are finally hammered. That's right. This is Wine Bid's podcast dedicated to all things wine value, wine auctions, wine retail, and just wine with you, of course. I am Jeff McGurn on Wine Bid's marketing team and my trusty compatriot here and wine auction and wine expert. That's right. This man knows all things about wine. He has forgotten more about wine than I will ever know is, of course, Paul Walker. <laughs> Paul, welcome back to the podcast. I will, let me let me also state that Jeff is our resident wine investment expert. So all questions about what you should buy and invest in wine, that Jeff's your expert there. That's right. If by investing, you mean not making money off of wine, actually, then yes. Uh, Jeff has a very unique philosophy about it. I'm like the Jim Cramer of wine investing. If you follow my picks, you will <laughs> you will underperform <laughs> the S&P 500. And he's, he's guns blasting and out, be, the, out I'll, the gate. I'll, I'll, yeah, right I'll, 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 I'll like hitting button. I need like I need like a whole setup here where I'm hitting buttons and it's saying weird things. And I need I need sound effects. You need right? like a futures like a futures button where it just b- automatically buys a case of mouton. Yeah, future. <laughs> buy, 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 hold. <laughs> <laughs> sell, sell, sell. Today, we're going to start off with France. We're looking at, uh, this is our France episode. We're looking at everything that's coming into auction. And speaking of interesting items coming into auction, you know, I normally don't talk a ton. Well, I, I don't spend too much time on first growth because then everybody knows about first growth. But 1976, six liter of Chateau Mouton Rothschild, a six liter of Mouton for a cool 3,080, already has a bid. So it's up to 3,280. But I ran some math there, and it, not that 76 is some marquee year for Bordeaux, but that comes out to about $385 per 750 milliliters for that for that Mouton. And I don't know, it seemed like an, a not unreasonable deal for a fun party bottle. I don't know that that's one that you're going to find is the best expression of, of Mouton, but I thought that was a really interesting thing up for auction <laughs> i like your description there best expression well, well, I, it's the best expression for the vintage right i mean there's no wine better than this that they made i assume maybe they sold their their best fruit to another producer and <laughs> they made it well i mean i'm sorry but best expression of bordeaux right but it'll be the best uh, now you're now vintage. you're really getting into it so would you consider this an investment grade wine, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just too easy. I got I got I got I got to you know, I got to trash talk. Uh, I'm going to go out of limb here and say this one may have peaked. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. I don't want to get in any trouble, but I feel like a lot of vintages of various wines, I guess I could be extra vague, from the 60s and 70s, and we're talking about Mouton right now, but anyway, there's some of these wines are just not super great. And I don't know, 76 might be, you know, might be improving, but hard to say. But the fact is, you're right, it's a large, large format. And eventually, you know, somebody's gonna, somebody born in 76 is gonna have a 50 year birthday in a couple of years. So I would think this would be a, a pretty amazing, you know, gift for a big party well, because I don't, I, you know, you you just don't see six liters of something that's almost 50 years old all the time. So, right. And, yeah. and look, here's the other thing. Look, at the end of the day, even a bad Mouton is still going to be great Bordeaux. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, no, that, that should be that should be a blast to to, to share with, the you know. How many people do you need to drink this? It's eight bottles, so about four people. Yeah, I was just going to say, three of your closest friends. Exactly. If, if you're Paul Walker. <laughs> <laughs> three Paul Walker friends, or like for a normal person, like, I don't two, know. Two, maybe two Paul Walker. Like 20. 20 yeah, 20 people 20 normally. People. <laughs> 20 My people friends normally. are all huge loadies. But yeah, no, it's... Um, I, that's a great bottle. I the yeah. other did you notice there was an well maybe you didn't notice this you didn't want to mention it I will mention it I'm bidding on it. I hope I win eighty one Lemission six liter did you see that I have it on my list okay there um, you go I did now and, I and thought, I'm frankly hoping, like I'm hoping that doesn't make it into the podcast <laughs> I thought <laughs> well for the money this is almost half cool. as much I mean it's not a first growth but it's almost half as much. It's and one ninety five for seven fifty. Well, the mission is like 
this is serious wine and it will last just like just like its neighbor you know oprion it'll last a long long time and there's 89 and 08 i flagged as well 08 i thought was a steal at 205 89's always been you know incredibly it's like the 75 89 the mission it's kind of just like chateau oprion for that matter so the 89 is at 1220 but the 81 six liter 1560 at least last i checked that's a steal that's a great great deal you should buy this thing you should buy it i actually i'm like my trigger finger is getting a little bit itchy on my trackpad because that's not i mean again it's like it's not a crazy price for 81 yeah most of the labels are missing but you know it, I know you you're you, aging better than this bottle. <laughs> I know your house is just filled to the brim with six liters of of La Maison Aubryon. I wish. But, are but you for, kidding? for me, this would be quite quite a treat yeah, to have that. And it's, yeah, I mean, I don't know what your BFFs are saying on, on Cellar Tracker about Well, let me let me tell you. But I bet um, this wine is drinking great. And in, in six liter format, it's you know that's such a sweet bottle that's that's so the a, last the other six later there, go for. there are a bunch of recent reviews on cellar tracker tasting notes from people who have uh the last four reviews from this year of the 81 llama song uh, people drinking it from six liters say it's over the hill don't even try bidding on it <laughs> leave it to jeff yeah so i'll take care of it so uh nobody listening needs to even look at no they're saying some of the fruit has dropped but it's still it's completely mature and and soft throughout if this six liter has been stored well then it'll probably be significantly like uh, it'll probably be much better than you know, the I bottle's in great shape. shape i mean other than the label label's got pretty decimated but other than that it's like great it looks fill. good yeah it looks really yeah. good the looks fill really level good. looks fantastic it doesn't look like the yeah the, the cork is looking pretty decent so i don't know this one looks really compelling i did have that on my list the other thing that i wanted to mention was the 1934 Obreon? I thought oh, this one yeah, was, yeah, was really yeah. cool. Pre pre World War II, there are some tasting notes from as as recently as 2021 saying it's actually still quite good. So uh, yeah, this is supposed to be pretty serious stuff. And I saw I saw some external hammer prices on this wine that were pretty insane. They were quite high. So I'm wondering, you know, might have been anomaly or something but not something you'd see again a very very rare you know very old and really really cool bottle definitely i think i was gonna say was there a couple other rather old selections and i think actually a couple other wines were from the same seller just because I, I know i know who's who's actually selling this but anyway really neat bottle and i got to look at it up close and check out some of the distinct kind of details with our secondary inspection expert uh kelly true expert actually yeah uh, kelly he's, kelly he's, knows he's a stuff. real expert <laughs> not unlike the two of us who are who unlike are the two of us did you happen to see this uh we have three we have these three bottles we have three bottles of o5 pavi oh god i knew you were going to mention pavi i was already, like already has bits. Gonna mention the pavi that's in auction this week for it's sure. already been, it already has bids they're 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 all they already have a bid. Yeah. Well, there's more than just 05, right? And there are a couple, I think there's a couple yes. of images. Yeah. What do you have against Pavi? It's fantastic juice. No, it's like, not. What's, what's your problem it's, with it? You don't like it's, it? It's spoofulated. That's what it is. What is spoofulated? What does that even mean? <laughs> uh, so now read Clive Coates' review. I think it's, is it the 05 or the 2000? Anyway, or maybe it's the 03 that he reviews. It's amazing. I'll I'll send it to you. Then you'll understand. I'm just being a snob because it's like it's modern in the in the way the term modern was used in the mid 2000s, where there was like maximum extraction, you know, the Michel Rolandation of wines. It was like, a you know, it's a thing. It's people like to, to talk trash about it. And, and I'm one of those people. Wait a second. Wait a second. So I literally just looked up spoofulated. It is a wine term that, that means. <laughs> It's quote the definition is ridiculous term used by detractors of Robert Parker for wines they deem were produced using some of the more modern, widely accepted winemaking techniques. There you go. 
There you go. You got <laughs> Spoofilated. it. Spoofilated. <laughs> Spoofilated. Wow. You never heard that before? Yeah. So <laughs> learning all the time. Sorry, I missed that word on the SATs, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but this probably it's got like three 100 point scores. We yeah, we have 14 of them in auction right now. Oh, the oh, it's the 05. Yeah. We have th- we have 14 in auction. And Wait, why? Where is James Suckling's bits. score? I'm d- disappointed that James Suckling's score is not added to the 05. He forgot. He forgot to <laughs> he forgot to review it that year. See. Another one I wanted to, to mention, which I don't know if I should mention because I feel like these have been climbing up in price, but this like 2010 brain uh, Kentonac. Uh, interesting. That one is at 90. Yeah, you know, um, you're right. Bucks. The prices of this stuff have definitely gone up. Like, it's, it's I, true. It's, it's totally true. Because I think we talked about it before where it's like, oh, yeah, the 09 was inexpensive or something. But yeah, you're right. The 10 is at 90 bucks. That's not that's not cheap. Well, there's a... Like I, wait a minute. Yeah, there's 10 at 110 and 10 at 90. And there's one at 110. There's a 10, yeah, 10 at 90 and a 10 at 110. But I feel like what's sort of... I don't know. I feel like you've been uh, I've been seeing a lot of these like second, third, fourth, fifth growth Bordeaux, which are like steadily creeping up where you used to be able to go grab them for like 50, 60, 70 bucks. And now yeah, like 80, 90, 100 dollars yep. along those lines. Like they're, fo- uh, they're actually, following Burgundy's lead. <laughs> they're following Burgundy's like, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't follow Burgundy's leads. Let's keep these things reasonable. 05, Falan Segur. This one, $55. This is that's a, you bad. know, that's not a bad price at all. The o, the 2000 Falan Segur is at 60. And I actually think the 05 is a better bottle. You know, it's delicious juice. And I think $50 is a fantastic price or 55 as it were. is a fantastic price for that stuff, right? Right yeah. next to drinking window. 86 uh, Chateau Maine. This one, I think, oh, is an awesome price. $65 okay. for this 86. And there are tasting notes as recently as April that say that it's still doing great. So yeah. that one I thought was really cool. And then we've got two bids on this 2000 Chateau O Batali. Mm-hmm. This one at 50 bucks, two bids have it at 53. Well, we've got two of them. So, uh, and, and then we've got two, sorry, we have two lots and both of them have bids taking them up to 53 bucks. Yeah, twenty three years of age for this. Oh, is it O Bat Batali? O Batai. O Batai. O Yeah. Twenty sixteen Dosi Dine. This one has one bid, uh, forty dollars. White Bordeaux. The reviews on it look fantastic. Seems like, uh, and it's already got some action. So that one seems fantastic. And then this one I wanted to bring up, this uh, non-vintage Jalance Cremant de Bordeaux Cuvée de mm. la Abbaye. This one uh, made from, uh, I believe, 100% sommelier. Really? How do you spell yeah. that? Cremant, C-R-E-M-A-N-T. I know how to spell Cremant. <laughs> sommelier, S-E-M-I-L-L-O-N. <laughs> Both producers. J-A-I-L-L-A-N-C-E. A-A-I? J-A-I-L-L. Okay. A-N-C-E. Jayons. Cremant Bordeaux. Wow, that's wild. I definitely did not see that. Yeah. Jayons. Actually, Cremant de Bordeaux. Huh. I thought that was really interesting. I, got bid, I, yeah, I got a couple of bids on it too. Well, we've got 12 of them available. That was a case. Yeah, okay. Um, 70, would, 70 on 30% Cabernet Franc? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I, mean, I yeah, I kind of want to. Oh, so, so sorry, I thought it was 100 percent something. Else. It, 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 so it's 70 percent something. Else. Kind of want to get a bottle just to taste what I have. I don't believe I've ever had Cremant from Sommelier and Cabernet Franc. Uh, I it definitely just, have not. That's really it looks interesting. fascinating, right? Yeah. I just want to know what it's like. It's you know just to be able to say that I you know strike that off my bucket list of uh you know Vermont from uh but uh uh well I mean, the back guess... label the back label says this wine is excellent for turning your everyday meals into a special occasion so there you go <laughs> see and that's the thing i'm always saying how much and you are always saying how much your everyday meals are just so mundane right <laughs> right well, they're I not mean, with you're... they're not with good wine <laughs> I, now, that I know like, about, now that I know about Jayon's Cremant de Bordeaux, they're going to be special occasions every day. So, yeah. Like, think of how much better that Costco bagel you eat every morning will be <laughs> if you just have a bottle of this. 
right? Or like, mm. or like your 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 toaster strudels <laughs> are, are, <laughs> will be just tremendously elevated with a bottle of Giants. Just any everyday any meal, any everyday meal, like one of those That's burritos true. you get from a vending machine and heat up <laughs> in, in a Seven <laughs> Eleven. Oh boy. All right. Well, moving on, I will, I, will, I will mention some of my Bordeaux picks for the week because I found it's too Paul. Lots of cool stuff. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there was a handful. Uh, hopefully, of, some of them will rise to making my meal special, which I don't know that I hope so too. I mean, I don't something. know. You're pretty jaded. At not this like point. the Giants. Yeah. No, they're not that cool. But uh, 70 Shovel Block, I saw that. Stuck out to me, 365 Reserve. Uh, there were a couple bottles. Of, well, 365, that's a great price yeah. for Shovel Blanc. Yeah, yeah. And it does well in those those beginning of the decade vintages. Anyway, 76 and 80 Dechem half bottles I saw too, because they weren't crazily expensive like some of the other vintages. 245 for the 76 and 230 for the 80. And they look awesome they look just delicious 2010 fete cline at 95 stuck out there's a 61 grand prix lacoste in this week for 650 great great vintage obviously and then yeah 34 oprion we mentioned 66 oprion and 78 oprion uh 490 for the 66 i had that wine actually not too long ago it was it was really good and um, 78 also very very good and then 85 Oprion as well at 555. So interesting vintages. That wine, you know, it can do really well in, in not off vintages, I would say, but vintages that aren't as celebrated as others for the decade. And then, of course, that killer, amazing six liter of 81 Lemission. 89 Lemission, we mentioned 08, I thought was was a good deal at 205. Oh, there's a 55 Latour du Brock which is i don't think i've ever seen before it came from the same seller actually as the 34 uh oprion mm -hmm. and that's a you know 55 is a great vintage in in bordeaux and not it's hard to find wines first of all but second of all i think anything under 300 bucks is pretty challenging to find but past inspection looks good and so that's a, that's a great an uh, older older wine then yeah you mentioned the 76 mouton six liter 05 heavy fougere i saw stuck out it's not cheap it's 200 bucks for that 09 pre early sheen it, i thought that was a good deal it's got a bit it looks like at 51 2000 claude marquis one of those in at 90 should be should be amazing and then let's see 89 Petrus. there are three of those in this week for 3800 bucks that's like one of the best vintages of Petrus, i think for the last 30 40 years and those were yeah those are my board of fix for the week let's take a jaunt on over to burgundy i wanted to mention we have this and i'm not sure you may not have heard of this producer but uh, i wanted to alert you of this it's 01 Domaine Loire, La Trace. I'm not sure you've heard of that vineyard. So you, do you want to pronounce it again? <laughs> <laughs> La Trace. La Trace. Uh, uh, that's what I just said. La Trace. La Trace. Chambartin. Chambartin mm. for a mere $5,900. This one, I don't know if you've done the research on this. This one last sold with us in 2018 for a mere $1,990. Wow. And now its reserve is $5,900. That's amazing. Bucks. That's amazing. Yeah. I only wish I had taken my entire 401k in 2018 and put it into <laughs> Domain Loire. Hey, you can do it now. So why don't you do it now? <laughs> I know. In fact, Imagine did what you it'll see, be in five years. <laughs> no, did you see that there's also some super rare, there's some super rare Dovene wines in this week, 61 and 64 Bourgogne as well from, you know, it's the same, same person. And those are substantially less than only twenty three fifty for the sixty one and twenty two hundred for the sixty. Well, did you see the Dovenet, Right, that's right. Did you, and you saw? Did you see the uh, ninety eight Dovene, the uh, Creo Batard Montrachet for yeah. ninety nine hundred? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is eye watering. That is just insane. <laughs> I couldn't believe it because, like, the Loire wines are expensive, and then you're like, oh no, this is this is La Louise's own estate. Like those, the Dovenet wines are just like unreal i mean just out of control that is a crazy crazy number uh, so. I, yeah, i'm just like i mean it's, we're getting into drc territory now 
right? Beyond. I mean, I don't think Montrose from DRC. I mean, the last bottle, what was like seventy five hundred for the. 06 or something so i mean yeah but i mean sorry we're getting into like i, I just mean like like we're getting into romani conti territory it's beyond that it's beyond right? that. Like it's, it's like this is like on territory it's like beyond what romani conti sells for i i mean you're right i think the the single yeah the small vineyard goes for more but still that's just craziness craziness yeah we've got this uh let's get let's let's come a little bit closer back down to earth we've got a 19 la flave puni montrachet for 295 i thought that one looked pretty pretty decent yeah that's pretty much entry level price now for demand yeah. love. entry uh, level price it didn't seem like crazy good stuff 2010 henri boulot uh volnay uh like Calare mag for 275. What was interesting to me is the mag is 275, but we have a 750 for 135. So this is one of those instances where you're paying a little bit more to get the magnum. Not much more, you know, it's like five bucks. Oh is- right. Yeah, I saw that. It's the Calare Volnay. Yeah, it's yeah. 2010. That's a nice bottle. We have an 05 Domaine uh Georges uh Muneray, Nuit Saint George. Uh, yes and uh, this one already has a bit on it took it from 350 to 370 not surprising um, no nah, not surprising what the, i think the what the 18 or night well 19s forget it but the 18 von roman i think just appalachian wine was was more than 300 bucks last thing last i checked so that's you think this yeah, pro five or something that's almost 20 years from a phenomenal red vintage this is not not unfortunately not terribly expensive <laughs> where do you i mean where do you think this one's going you think this is this will go before it might yeah it that wouldn't seem to be out of the out of the realm of possibility i don't think you know just considering what what's going on with 19 so well the last time this sold with us was in 2017 for 140 bucks right i mean and, and that's what you know a lot of things at 150 bucks you know were are now double or more, especially from great vintages. So, and George Munier, I mean, these are, their wines are just amazing. So that's, it's not, not too surprising. 05 domain, uh, Fourier. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of Fourier. I, I, I flagged a few of those cause they're not, I mean, they're not cheap, especially just for, again, Appalachian Jever Chambertens, what well, 180, did, 170 for the 09. They're like 180. Did you see there was a 2012 mag for yeah. 250? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's very I cool. The, I thought the mag would be a really neat one. I mean, when you look at 180 versus the, you know, versus the 250, you now granted it's 2012, but that one looks pretty cool. 09, uh, Gerard Raffet, Carmez Chambertin for 110. You know, okay, it's 09, but 110 for a Grand Cru seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Raffet, those wines are consistently quite a bit less than their counterparts in the same vineyards, but they're not the same level, but, you know, they're not terribly expensive. Domaine Dubler, uh, Nuit Saint-Georges, uh, Le Terres Blanche, $65. That seemed like a solid deal to me. And then an 05 Henri Giles, uh, Remor Quay. Remor Quay? <laughs> I, I, I can't pronounce this. <laughs> Von Romani. This one already has a bid to give her 120 to 130. But also, Remorque. no, it's Remor- it Remori K, excuse me, Remori K. Oh, did you just wait? Did you just mispronounce it? Mr. Yeah, like, French I pronunciation. Looking, I was looking at the, the letters in the wrong order. So that's why I mispronounced it. What do you Not think about I don't this know how one, to pronounce though? it. I was just having but, a momentary vision problem. So. But what do you, I mean, what do you think of this one? I mean, 120 to 130, this seems like a decent deal. Yeah, I actually tagged the 05 as well. It's got a bid to this. It's interesting because it's Von Robe, but it's Eau de Sud Malconsor. It's a different parcel, I think, of Malconsor. I mean, again, this is where you need like a real expert who knows these vineyards and producers very well. Actually, I know somebody I can ask who would let me know right away. But anyway, I don't know if, you know, this is, well, let's just say right now, for example, I can't wait to mention, so I will now. There's a whole bunch of Sylvain Catiar wines, and one of the vineyards is Malconsor, Von Romani Malconsor, which is incredible stuff. But I would be willing to bet that, you know, this is not in the same parcel and probably a few rows 
away, it's not, it's obviously going to be in the area, of, you know, Malik and Sora's vineyard, but still, yeah, I'm really curious. This is cool. Oh, five Pascala show close St. Denis. Uh, yeah, those, uh, it's the show, man. Anything the show is expensive as hell. Well, this one, we have two lots. One already has bids taking it from 150 to 160. But the one, even even at the 150, 160 range, like, yeah, is, is it cheap? No. Is it crazy expensive? No. It doesn't seem like a terrible deal either for Burgundy, right? For great Burgundy. What other Burgundy did you have on your radar? Well, let's see. In addition to some of the crazy stars we mentioned, there's uh, yeah, there's 05 LM Bourguet, Von Romane Le Rouge de Dessou. I, I saw that popped out. Two of those at 165. 15 Albert Moreau Bone Touron. This is a really great bone producer and it's inexpensive. I think it's had a bit, it's 36, but great red vintage and not expensive. <laughs> 09, I saw Bouchard, the Bone Greve, Vandalin, Fon Jesus. There's a bottle of that in for 160. That stuff is always very, very good. Oh, there's a Claire uh, Dow Bun Mar 71 at 1100. Very collectible stuff, really, really hard to find. Uh, lots written about how amazing these older uh, Claire Dow wines were. Yeah, you mentioned the Dauphiné Creole Tard. That's just wild. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, there's a 2010 De Monti back in Bone again. Uh, bone Le Perrier at, uh, got a bit, looks like at 56. That stuck out to me. It's not, not too expensive. Excellent wine with 13 years on it. And yeah, there's a whole selection of Fourier. I thought that actually the Fourier Bourgogne Rouge 13 at 70 was appealing. I mean, it's, like, it's a lot to pay for Bourgogne Rouge, but Fourier doesn't mess around. It's not going to be, you know, inexpensive or underwhelming wine, I should say. Then, yeah, there's Mag of uh, Fourier Gevray uh, Cherbaud also at 300. And then the other ones we mentioned. Yeah, another, that's the 06 Lefleve Chevalier 950. I did want to mention really quick, because I forgot to talk about it earlier, but there was a bottle of Pierre's Colin Moray Montmarché in last week, which I think hammered for over $2,000. So maybe the, the Dauphiné Creole Pitard doesn't sound so expensive. But anyway, those, it's just it's just wild to see these prices. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there's some 05 Mom Mazi Chamartan, which I didn't think was too bad. Four of those in at 330. And so that's a that's kind of an under underappreciated producer, and prices are not nearly as as high as some of the neighbors in, in Mazi Chamartan. 99 are new. There's some 9905 are new. And let's see, Nuit saint Corvée Corve Page 05 at 155, and then Le Poise 05 at 190, six of those. And then there's a Romney Saint Vivant 02 from Arnoux at 1320, which stuck out. Also, uh, 16 Francois Carillon Bourgogne Blanc, a couple of those in, 25 each. Didn't think that was a bad deal. It's a little bit of a lean white vintage, high acid, uh, at least in my experience, for some of those. The profile is a little lean, but they're still quite excellent. And for 25 bucks, that's not a terrible price for some excellent Chardonnay. 98 Jante Pansio Charm Chamartin, one of those in for 200. I didn't think that was crazy. The Romorique, we talked about that. The I want to find out where the Odessu de Malconsor is. I'm sure we'll find an expert can tell us. 02 uh, Duran Montrachet Marquis de la Guiche in one of those in for uh, 860. There's a couple of Jado wines that stuck out, uh, some close on shock from 85, uh, one of those at 255, and then a 90 at 485. Talked about the Dauphiné Bourgogne 6164s. There was a Nicolas Potel Malconsor. Again, <laughs> that seems to be a theme today. The Malconsor from Potel 05. There's five of those at 170. I thought that was actually a pretty good deal for something from that vineyard as well. Uh, 92 Paul Perrineau Pouligny Follettier. There's one of those in for 67. There's a bunch of other Perrineau wines as well. Let's see. And then back to Bone, there's some some uh, 15 Pierre Guimot Savigny Serpentier uh, for 45. There's a 15 Guimot Narbonton at 40. And then there's some another great Bone producer, Simon B's 05 uh, mm. Savigny Le Bone Oguette at 77 and then Vergilus at 81. And then I mentioned Cat Yard. I was, I was, I've 
really impressed with the collection this week. There's like, it's just awesome. There's an 05 uh, Nuit Saint-Georges, there's 99 Nuit au Merger. There's, I think, multiple lots of each as well. There's some 03, 05 au Merger. Let's see, 08 au Merger. And then there's 05 Romani Saint-Vivant. There's 05 von Romane, there's 99 Malconsor, and then there's a magnum of 99 Malconsor, which I was I was blown away. I don't think I've ever seen one of those. So that's really, really cool. 01 Malconsor, 05 Malconsor, and 05 Sioux Show. And there's multiple bottles. There's not just one of each. It's, it's a really beautiful collection. And I think that wraps up my uh, Berg selections. All right, then. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's been uh, Burgundy and Bordeaux. Join us later in the week. We're going to have some picks for the rest of France and then also outside of France. We'll we'll travel around the world and give us some of our ideas. With Wine Bids Finally Hammered, this has been uh, Paul Walker and Jeff McGurn wishing you happy bidding and cheers. Cheers. Cheers.